Hey, welcome to a new Project Camp update. So we bought this big piece of land and are prototyping a more sustainable way of living. Not sure how it's gonna go, but let's see. And in the previous update, you could see the shipping container arriving to the land, so we installed it. And we also cleaned up the space around it to make the place a bit nicer. And in this video, I'm gonna share you our biggest problems or challenges. And one of the big problems we have right now is that we don't really have a place to sit. So that was an easy problem. Okay, so talking about problems. So I uh, already made one of these videos before in update number eight. All right, so here are our challenges. And I had three problems we had back then. One was we needed the roads to be cleaned so the container could arrive. Check. We needed to get an address to make sure we could ask for quotations for electricity. Check. And we actually need to get electricity. We're not there yet. Uh, we did ask for quotations and it would be 20,000 euro to hook us up to the grid um, because then we get our own transformator and we can distribute from there. For half the price, 10,000 euro, the electricity company would pay half. So uh, yeah, we split the cost, but it also means then it's public. So anyone else around you could use it, uh, meaning you might end up in the future having uh, electricity poles on your land. Or the third alternative is still to go completely uh, off grid. Um, I'm not really sure yet what to do with the grid situation. So for now we decided to just have a small solar setup just to power a base camp. And we're going to use a generator if we ever need to use uh, our tree phase electricity. Which would be very occasionally just for chopping something every now and then. Um, but that's going to be it for quite a while actually. And then later on once we really build the workspace we're going to see whether we're going to put it full of panels or we're going to uh, hook to the grid. So yeah, those problems are kind of fixed, I would say. Another thing we're gonna have coming up is the water. Uh, so we need to get water to hook up these containers. Uh, still looking a bit into what makes sense. Can we realistically clean our natural springs? Uh, how long does it take? Do we need to drill a borehole? Uh, yeah, we're still looking into that. But to be honest, these are not really problems. Maybe challenges, but not even that. It's kind of straightforward. Um, because it just takes some investigation, you know, it's possible and in the end you would come up with a solution. But I would say we actually have one way bigger problem. <laughs> one, uh, I don't know. Okay, let's dive into this. So the problem. Uh, my mind is not very clear on this, so I hope it comes out a bit fluent. Um, and I also was doubting a lot actually whether I should mention because once you hear, you cannot unhear. So it might affect those who are actually going to come to Project Camp and they would focus on it. But anyway, the problem is highway sounds. Yes, I know, sounds very boring but kind of a big deal. Uh, so in general, this is quite a peaceful and quiet place and a few weeks ago we started hearing highway sounds. We're not really sure why they were suddenly there. Maybe uh, the neighbor chopped down some trees and suddenly the sound came, maybe it's the wind, maybe the weather, may I don't know, to be honest. Um, but it's kind of a big thing in this place where it's so peaceful and quiet to hear them. And they're not always there, but occasionally. And today it's actually now we hear them, or I hear them, I don't know if you can. But I think when I turn my camera you might hear them because the microphone is pointing in that direction. So let's give it a try to see if you can hear them as well. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I hear a lot of bird sounds. Yes, the birds are also there, which is great. But on the background, and I really don't know if you can hear it, you hear this highway sound, which is in a way not obstructing at all. You can easily communicate with each other. But being in this place, kind of in the middle of nowhere, it feels very out of place to have this 
highway sound. And like I mentioned, it's very sporadic. It's not always there. Um, so we started to first understand a bit where it comes from. Okay, so we started with a map. So here's Project Camp and here's the highway, 1.5 kilometer distance. And occasionally we hear some sounds from this area, not often. And this is six kilometers away. All right, some searching. How far can you hear highway sounds? I live 200 meters away and I can hear the freeway noise when outside with the wind in my direction. Really? 200 meters seems like nothing. Depends on the wind. The wind direction will make a difference. Okay, okay, wind seems to be important. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that uh, to see which direction the wind comes from. And you have some pretty cool interactive maps on that actually. Time of the year is important with the loss of leaves on trees. Okay, makes sense. How do temperature and wind affect noise? Sound waves move faster in hot air, okay. Also need to visit in a wet day, rain influences, okay. And not just the distance, but also the barriers. Okay, that's a lot of variables, <laughs> hard to really understand. So I started the spreadsheet to keep track of them. And three times a day we walk around on the land uh, to observe the sound and write down the things we see to see if we can see a pattern. And it's actually been quite nice to see the land uh, this often and really analyzing it while you walk around. And we noticed so far that most sounds come from the 1.5 kilometer highway, makes sense. Uh, we didn't really measure anything in the cold, so that could still be a reason why we didn't hear anything in the winter. And we noticed that the base camp is the loudest place and down in the creek is the least sound. And probably because it's lower in the land. And this made us think that the landscape must affect quite a lot as well. So let's have a look at that. To see what's between us and the highway. So base camp is here and first there is a lot of vegetation and bushes and then some trees here as well but most got burned like four years ago so mainly young trees but there are a few bigger ones as well. Also a bunch of houses. Oh, whoops I have to go up a bit here losing my connection and here is another field with trees and then here is the highway. And it's not really busy. In fact, I've been driving it a few times and most of the time it's actually not busy. Just loud trucks and rush hour get very noisy. But flying here with the highway down there, I noticed quite a lot of people live way closer to the highway compared to us. So you might wonder, uh, why is it such a big problem? I mean, the locals are happy with it or they don't even notice the sound. Uh, aren't you exaggerating a bit the situation? Yes, could be. Um, but I think what's the difference is that uh, as a local you grew up here. So you didn't really choose this place, you were just born. Just like the place I grew up. I don't know, maybe there were highway sounds, maybe not. I wasn't really aware of it. Um, but we really chose choose to come to this place. Of all the places in the world we pick this one and it really makes you start thinking like is this the place I want to be? Do I want to be with highway sounds the rest of my life? And I'm gonna invest a lot of time and resources into this land. Is this really the place it's gonna be? And I think those are kind of heavy questions on you but I guess the rational side of me would also say every place probably has its ups and downsides. There's always something you just got to make it work true but still it is I don't know maybe just an excuse to myself uh, so I'm not sure what is the best way to be honest uh, the only thing I am certain about is that it's kind of a heavy topic uh, and I think I had a little bit the same with the rain when I realized so much rain would fall here but actually I could now see a bit more the upsides of it and grow stuff uh, and actually when you plant things it's super nice that the rain comes but I guess for highways I don't see any positive element to it. And even looking into solutions, I mean there isn't that much. The best thing I could find was plant a tree uh, to cover up the sound. But there are already a lot of trees and it would take 15 years. And apparently another very common practice is to put a water fountain <laughs> to cover up the sound. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that's a lot of water fountains on one land. And also seems a bit strange. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's worth trying. But I think that's sort of how I convince myself now is that it's a good challenge because, I mean, we live one and a half kilometer away from the highway with a lot of forest in between. If we have this problem, it must be uh, for way more people. 
Uh, or maybe we realize we just adapt and uh, it's all good as well. And once other people come and we start making noises ourselves, it would fade away. I don't know. So I think uh, we're just gonna continue forward and trying to find solutions to this problem or uh, hopefully it goes away and it was just one month in spring that it's like this. So yeah, big problem. Feels very heavy, kind of scared about it, but somewhat positive, it will be okay. Anyway, this brings me to my next point, is uh, support.projectcomp.com. Don't click away, I know you always do when this comes, uh, <laughs> but this is different. So we have this website, support.projectcomp.com, where you can support the project by making a single donation, thank you for everyone doing that, or supporting on Patreon, also thank you guys. But now today, actually during this video, we release uh, a new section which is called uh, Workforce. So it's uh, specific tasks that you can help out with your hands. So it's really to, to help us out with a few problems we have. So one obvious one is, uh, I mean, the big problem. We don't have a pizza oven. We would really like a pizza oven. Um, but also a sound engineer to look into the highway sounds or someone that likes photography to uh, capture the beauty of the land and the animals that live here. So I would say have a look on their website to see if something fits you and maybe you can come here. Uh, and a few weeks ago we also added this section, it's called Sponsor Big Development. So it's for people that want to contribute to some, some big amount for a specific thing. So it could be the wood chipper, it could be the renovation of the kitchen or the workspace or reforesting the land. And we actually had two big donations from there. One is a new camera, which is cool, so that's gonna come. And the other one is uh, a guest house. So the first Project Camp guest house is now uh, funded. So thank you very much for that. Uh, this really pushes the project a lot. So if you have some crypto laying around, uh, make sure to check that page. Uh, yeah, so that was it. That was this video. Those were the current problems. Uh, I hope it was not too heavy, but I guess that's how it is. Uh, next video, we're gonna do something fun again. Not sure yet what, but we'll find something. Maybe we put the highway on fire. No.